All right, everybody, we got something that I'm pretty excited about. It is an Enios Grenadier. <laughs> gentleman was very upset about the old Land Rover Discovery, not Discovery, but the Defender going out of production and then they turned it into whatever the heck it is considered now, which is a nice luxury cruiser that can go off-road, but just is not real world for us. And he wanted to do something about it. So this guy has some stones, created his own company, his own vehicle, the Ineos Grenadier. It's a cool truck. It's not cheap. It was a tough check to write this weekend for sure, but I'll tell you what, I was down at a dealer in Florida uh, hanging out for my birthday and I crawled underneath one of these things and it is the most bulletproof, stoutest built, big piece of iron I've ever seen underneath and hopefully 10 times more reliable than the old uh, the vulnerable Land Rover Defender. It's got the road manners of a modern vehicle, not all of them, it, it could be definitely better, but uh, I'm not kidding you. We'll go into a deep dive on this thing later on, I'll put it on lift. I'm sure a lot of people haven't gotten to see the underside. You've heard stories about, he has to seat this or that, that. We're not gonna deal with as much of that fluffy stuff. We're gonna deal with the meat and potatoes, which is the stuff that all you overlanders really wanna hear anyway. I'm gonna open up the hood. They've got a little safety on there. You crank the lever twice, which is pretty smart because it's a big hood, uh, hood lever. Old school prop, gotta love it. It works, got a little lock in here. But this is something that is trick that any else did. You know, on multiple vehicles, I've always had to throw the hood all the way back to try to uh, get it up and out of my way so I could work on the engine or climb up in something that melted that I usually ended up wiring wrong or something. But what any else did here is they've got another hood prop here and somewhere down here is the secondary one. So you could prop that thing all the way up. Actually, I think it's right here to there. So the thing stands almost you know, perpendicular to the vehicle. Really cool. So what we got going on here is, I ain't gonna lie to you guys, I am a German uh, fanatic, but not BMW. <clears throat> I've always been a Mercedes guy and whatnot, and Volkswagen, and Audi and all that stuff. But when I heard about the BMW motor that was going in this, I wasn't too sure, but doing the research and talking to a bunch of my buddies uh, in Bavaria and here stateside, this is the three liter turbocharged B58 BMW motor. This has been voted 10 different times, one of the best engines in the world. Probably the best work BMW's done in over a decade. To give you an idea how good this is, <clears throat> it is, uh, Toyota has BMW build this motor to put in the Supra. That's saying something. So if Toyota's got endorsing it, then you know it's pretty stout. Um, it is around that 245, maybe 265 horse, I don't remember. It's got enough to move the curb weight of this thing's around 5,800 pounds. But man, you hit the go pedal and it, it moves it. Fuel economy is decent. Right now, I don't have a lot of miles on it yet, but highway driving combined and this and that here in Denver, um, I'm almost 17 miles a gallon, um, which counts because it takes premium. But they detune this motor. So people are gonna say, ah, oh, 260, whatever, that's nothing. Guys set this thing at 500 horse all the time. 400 horse in one of my buddies BMW from a stock configuration, um, so, They've detuned it. I don't know if they've lowered the compression on this, but you could run as low as 87 octane. Does that mean only 87 octane at sea level, or can I go lower here in Colorado because we're generally two points lower than the rest of the world? We'll see, but uh, you can go lower on that one, um, which is gonna be nice too. As far as this engine layout, it's trick, you guys. They did, this is <clears throat> compared to the Jeep, compared to Toyota, compared to anything, I could touch almost everything on this engine. <clears throat> From underneath, I could grab the entire turbo assembly. Starter's directly on the bottom. It's got this cool casting that unbolts and comes off. Um, I've got two coolant reservoirs. I've got power steering reservoir, I believe, here. There are quite a few radiators stacked up in this thing. We'll see how that ends up panning out with us getting in all the dusty debris and weeds and all that crap. But, awesome, man, the motor. They put the alternator right on top, just like what I would see in Africa and some of the cool Fords over there. Uh, air compressor for the air conditioning is right below that. Another nice thing, and this is relatively, get, this is getting more common, but for the power steering pump, which all of us know when we're off-road and we're in deep stuff up against a rock, we're always squawking belts, melting belts, whatever. They did, hiding up in this corner, 
you'll see these huge electric cables hiding down over here that go to an electric motor that drives a power steering bump, which is hiding over here. Really neat, no belts, no anything. And the nice thing is at idle, you've got whatever flow that that pump requires given to it by an electric motor, which is kind of a segue into something that I really don't like about this vehicle and a lot of people had voiced their uh, negative opinion on it is I may nickname this thing Pong as in the uh, original video game where you're bouncing off the lines back and forth. This thing wanders going down the highway and it's, it's not just from the rotations of the steering wheel. It's the caster looks like it's about almost three degrees. So the caster's about in check. We're going to mess with that. But we do believe it's just a setting that could probably be corrected if we could get into the logic of this thing and the power steering thing. We've already done that on our Ford Tremor um, and we've messed with that on some other vehicles. So hopefully we could get rid of that. What I will say that stinks on the highway end is magic on the off-road end. It's just awesome. This thing has got no problem with any of that stuff. If you're an overlander guy or an off-roader guy or you plan on traveling anywhere, even if you're gonna take this thing to the dealer, you want your vehicle as easy to work on as possible because if you're paying 225 an hour, if you're lucky at 175 an hour or 265 an hour, you want that tech to get in there and get out of there quick. And most importantly is you want to avoid getting the tech. So if you could reach certain things that are relatively easy, that's a huge deal. And especially if you're in the middle of nowhere. And that's one concern I have with every modern car today, every single one of them. This is the only one that I am extraordinarily comfortable with getting in here and getting to everything. So that's a plus right there. Uh, the construction of this guy is a bunch of galvanized steel panels and then a bunch of aluminum panels as well. <clears throat> it's, it's a nice setup. Ordered this one with the factory winch on there. We're gonna build a full custom bumper, integrated bull bar, or I should say modularly integratable bull bar with a different winch style setup. This one is pretty low on the winch uh, cable. I think it's only around 50 feet, maybe it's 80, but I doubt that. And then the problem that we have with this setup is, A, I'm a terrible driver, I hit everything, and the sheet metal is really not overly thick. It's not bad, I mean, it's par for the course, but not quite good enough. Um, so we're gonna create something to handle uh, either the same size winch, or if we could go a little bit bigger, depending on the crush zones, if we don't wanna negatively affect that, we'll do that. Um, but it's nice, it's, uh, the winch is built, uh, I think it's red winches, here in the States, we don't know that, but I know that from racing overseas in Poland and whatnot. Red is, you know, that's a known company. Same thing with Australia. But the lighting is phenomenal. Uh, the headlights are great. These auxiliary lights only come in with certain recipes of off-road mode and this and that. We'll come up with something there. Um, but overall, beautiful truck. One thing that's gonna be interesting is there's a cooler hiding in here and there's another cooler hiding in here as well. So those coolers, as everybody can see, when we get into the swampy stuff, I'm not sure how that's gonna pan out. I did check out one of these Grenadiers that was already doing some test runs and whatnot, and they went into some floodwaters and it definitely needs to get cleaned out. So we're gonna see what we can do about that. But if you, it's beautiful. The clearance of this bumper is phenomenal. I mean, look at that. That's from the factory, not having to do anything. It's just great. Uh, the durability of the bumper, I don't think is gonna be nearly as phenomenal as the, clear, as the clearance and everything. But like I said, we're gonna take care of that. And that kind of brings me into the, why did we buy a Grenadier? <clears throat> we build accessories for every vehicle out there. And then on my other company, Couch Off-Road, we build high-end stuff for the Mercedes Unimog. I think this is the kind of perfect in-between to kind of bridge both those things. So it's gonna be a collaboration between Couch Off-Road Engineering and uh, Dirtbox Overland. So we'll be doing all the cool interior stuff, the cool fold-out tables, the rack. We are gonna play with stuff down in the drivetrain. Um, I don't wanna talk about it now, but it's gonna be a really trick if we do decide to go that way. The bumper setup, we already do. We have couch suspension, which makes some amazing. Our, our reservoir shocks are a 14 position shock. Uh, they're made for the fat kids. And this is exactly what this is gonna be as a chubby kid going down the road. They are phenomenal. So kind of rolling back on this thing, people are they're like, why $92,000 for a vehicle with steel wheels? Yes, I wanted steel wheels. Anybody who really knows the deal with steel and aluminum knows why. When I smash one on a rock or I nail something, I try to bend back an aluminum, I almost always break it. The steel one, I could pound it back into shape. I've got some steel wheels from back in the day from the late 80s that I'm still running on one of my rigs. Not all the time, but it's, they're tough. So 
they call it about a, they say it's a 31-ish tire, but the reality is the diameter of this wheel and tire combo is the same as a stock Rubicon Gladiator or Wrangler. It measures at 32 and just under a quarter inches. So, and Jeep calls it a 33, so I'm gonna say this really is about a 33. Um, the, doing a lift on it, you could do a light lift. We'll see how that goes. It's an easy lift, by the way. Slightly bigger on the tire, 35 is great. But one thing to keep in mind, everybody gives it a hard time about these baby tires. Well, if you've been in Africa, or you've been in South America, or any of these places, or even Mexico, Try finding a 35, not easy. Try finding a 37, forget about it, not gonna happen. This is a prevalent tire size around the globe. That is, I'm assuming, why Enios went ahead and chose that. This is made for not just here, this is made for worldwide travel, which is really exciting about it. This thing's very uh, Defender 110-ish. It's also kind of Glenda Wagon-ish. That's why we choose, chose this color here. It's kind of got that, um, that in between kind of looks a little G-Wagon, kind of looks a little Defender, but the nice thing that it has that's not Land Rover-ish, this door, listen. Ooh, yeah, it's like a 30-year-old G-Wagon, perfect every time. So we'll see if it holds up that long, but a neat thing here, people know this, they, they describe this as the utility belt. I don't know why anybody would not buy this right off the bat. You could probably put it on after the fact, I'm guessing, but it's L-Track all through the exterior of this thing, running down on that guy. There's also L-Track mounted in the rear section down below that has, I believe, six bolts that go to the frame. Really cool stuff. So, people are like, why do you want L-Track on the outside? Well, if you really don't have a lot of room, which you don't, because it's not a huge truck, we could make a rack that goes here, locks in this panel, and we could put traction boards, or we could put uh, water tanks or something. Same story here. You could do a flip-out table. Um, you could do another little uh, uh, fuel tank sitting right there, or a water tank. Whatever, man. You know, when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to carry something, instead of sticking everything on top of the roof, it's kind of nice to be able to access these goodies. But I'll show you kind of a quick glimpse of the inside. It's somewhat utilitarian, which I like. The only thing I don't like is I do not like the center console. The, the digital console is a beautiful console. I like that part of it. I'm just a little old school. I like them right in the middle there. So what we're gonna try to do and I'm trying to quit being so hard-headed, is I've never had a vehicle that didn't have anything right in front of me, so we're gonna try to go ahead and create something for this space that can maybe hold your tablets, hold your phones, have something that's kind of integrated into the dash there. Who knows, maybe I'll like it more because I'm maybe paying more attention to map stuff or other information there uh, that I don't have to look away from, so we'll see. But as of now, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you know, give me a little bit of time, maybe I'll like it, so. There's that. Uh, we went ahead and chose the non-all leather. They are Recaro seats, which are pretty dope. They're nice. Um, I'm kind of a scrawny guy, so it's hard for me to get a seat that I'm not falling around in, but this thing fits tight. Uh, we chose the cloth because I'll probably put seat covers on it and the leather seats or faux leather seats with, with uh, covers slides all over and you slide all over too if you're getting a lag or off-road. So very simple. Gas pedal, brake, telescopic thing. You know, the, the, one of the cool features is their little toot horn. Thought it was goofy at first, but it's fantastic. It's, it's like the half honk. So if you want to get a cyclist out of your way or, or you're just trying to be friendly, it's loud, but it's not enough that's going to wake up the neighbors. So one of the coolest things, to, they're, I'm going to say one of the co coolest things over and over, but it's because there's so many of them. So let me show you a cool deal that they did here. I'm going to get on the other side and open this up. Thing trick about lifting the seats up, in fact, it's very rudimentary and straightforward, simple, but what you find underneath is beautiful, especially to aftermarket installers, boys and girls. Two ginormous batteries. If you go with uh, the extra power pack uh, option, which includes a lot of power up on the lights. This is a CTEC inverter. We use these on a lot of our Overland builds, already factory in, uh, factory setup, so you're getting a proper DC charge to those batteries, monitoring it, not overloading your uh, alternator as well. You've got a cool little, uh, little fuse setup on here that you could add big items to, this, that. It has, this is insane. On my auxiliary switches up on the top here, it has a 25 amp, let's see, I can't read them all because I'm on my specs, on 25 amp, 25 amp, 10 amp, 25 amp, 10, 10, and a 500, 500 amp switch on this thing. That's insane. You hit that switch, you, you hear a click on, and that's for running your winch in the front. 
It also has a NATO connector on the back, which is usually 24 volt, but obviously this is gonna be 12. So you can run a remote winch on the rear. This is brilliant, you guys. I mean, all my wiring's right here. Heavy cable, this, that, it's phenomenal. And don't be a spoiler for the people who wanna to upgrade to the bigger sound system. It's just a tiny little like JBL subwoofer about this big and it kicks the use of you being able to use this battery. So get room for the battery instead, or you could always switch it up later on. Another cool thing. It's just cute. It's, I got my little storage for my, my, my tow rope, my this, my that, and it's lockable. If somebody really wanted it in there hard, they could probably peel it open, but you know what? It's cool. You got it right there. The other thing that's legit, this ladder is, this is the real deal, man. It actually works. We're going to come up with something that'll possibly flip down and get that so you're not reaching so high, but it is definitely nice. Uh, again, another cool thing. Their bumpers are really, really well thought out. Their clearance is just amazing. The, the rear bumper feels pretty stout, we'll see. So we'll see, hopefully it's something we don't have to address, but if we do need to, we certainly will. So actually hiding behind this plate down here is actually where my hitch is, and there's a NATO connector, and then there's your 7RV seven, seven flat, I believe, right there. I can't remember the towing capacity, if it's 7,000 pounds or what, but it's, it's reasonable. So I'm gonna open up the doors on this guy. Why everybody bad mouths the baby doors beyond me. I'm constantly tossing things in here. Uh, so it's cool. And it's just a, you know, it's an old Land Rover thing and other stuff, but I, I like it. I think it's really trick. You know, another nice thing that I told you before is we've got l track factory mounted in the sky. And I was told that, I'll verify this, but I was told that these six bolts, three per side, go straight to the chassis. Seems to me like somebody needs to make a back seat for this guy, right? So we'll see on that. Um, pretty trick. Just to give you some other ideas that what's really nice is, I thought this is like some weird backup camera or something. No, it's not. It is the match to this that is the female to these males right here. Those pieces come in and lock that whole system so you're not relying on just the latch system. Pretty cool. Um, I've seen that in some of our Unimogs for Switzerland for the side doors where they lock in in case of a rollover type thing. That's just well thought out. That's all there is to it. Here's my release. I mean, it's there. If this thing fails, I can just get to it. That's so cool. I mean, I don't like all the, the covers and the plastic. I mean, yes, there is a lot of plastic, but it's nothing like what I'm used to. The other thing too is these mats. You could literally take out the, you, not just the rubber floor mats, but this plasticky rubbery stuff, you could take that out of the Grenadier open the drain plugs, which are actually pretty legit drain plugs, and gently hose that thing out. Don't go power washing, but clean all the mud and everything out of that. That's nice. What's, some people are like, well, I'm never gonna do that. Yeah, but you know what? You can get to access, access the wiring that goes underneath there as well. So that is really cool without tearing everything apart. This is a little storage panel in here. There's a separate little table that flips down. It's pretty cool, but not cool enough, so we'll definitely address that. Um, reasonable space in here. One thing that people are not gonna like too much is if I could flip it down here, is you got it. This is not accurate because you flip the seat forward and then that goes down. You still have a pretty sizable hump right here. So what Tao and me are thinking about doing is maybe we, on our drawer systems that we'll create for the back of this, we might make a flat kit. So if we can have this set up where everything lays relatively flat, you might be able to kick that seat forward to be able to camp out one person there and sleep. Not sure, but we'll play with that. And the reason for that is because all the electric st systems down there, the twin batteries, the, your uh, DC DC charger, all that stuff is hiding there. So it's got to be a little bit tall. And the other thing is too, you can't really go too deep in the floor without hitting the frame. And then also the fuel tank, this thing is not the thirstiest thing out there, but it's also not the most fuel efficient. Your fuel tank already hangs pretty low to begin with. So they had to keep it up. So that's where they kind of compromised. Now we're going to get to what I call the diaper of the Grineos. This thing doesn't really hit anything. Um, it's good clearance and all that other stuff. There's a massive muffler in there. Um, it's a turbocharged engine. It already has a silencer up front. We're gonna remove that and just see how loud it is. If it's not, you know, we don't wanna to get too rowdy because it is, you know, we don't wanna disturb a lot of people. But if we can remove this, there is a massive amount for possible auxiliary fuel storage. So we'll see. Plus the aesthetics, I mean, it's, it's stupid to remove something just for aesthetics. But uh, if I can mount some things in there or get better access, uh, we'll probably end up doing that. So huge, beefy tow hooks. 
I can't complain. Nice stuff. Our sensors are all in there. So like I said, if we end up doing a new bumper, we'll have to incorporate our backup sensors. Uh, the backup camera, which is right here, is far from amazing, but it works. You know, the thing's, uh, the thing's a utility vehicle. It's not this uh, posh mall cruiser. Learn how to use your mirrors. If you can't use your mirrors, you probably shouldn't be driving deep in the woods. This freaking frame and these axles is un they're unbelievable. The suspension is a very basic coil link suspension, I believe four link and four link. Uh, the um, radius arms, well, not radius arms, but a, the, the links for it, stout, definitely stout. Um, adjustable on the front for sure for alignment. Uh, it has big Eibach coil springs in there, which is nice. That's something you can almost buy off the shelf. The axles, the axles. Our giant telehandler, which is will lift 55 feet in the air, carry, uh, it'll lift 11,000 pounds. Same manufacturer as these things. When I crawled underneath this guy, it actually is a high center differential, meaning center line of that axle versus the height of the diff in the bottom of the diff, it's actually cleared up for more clearance on the bottom. It is also the drain plug, and instead of being on the bottom where it gets smeared off by the rocks, is in the side, huge castings. It's a high pinion in the front. The steering linkage is massive. Uh, it almost looks like a Dana 60. I can't wait to get inside that thing and see what it looks like. The other extraordinarily cool and not cheap part, it shares some of the technology that the Unimog does. Instead of a CV joint or a regular U joint, which binds, it's a double carbon U joint. Not cheap, very durable, very tough stuff. And the casting is massive for this housing as well. The other neat thing that I've never seen anybody do before, Enios has incorporated in their axle design cast drilled and tap threaded holes in the differential so we could go ahead and manufacture skid plates that don't have to have this cobbled up clamp around system. Now we literally directly could bolt it up. In fact, even on some of the crashables, meaning your uh, rear frame mounts for the uh, uh, trailing arms, there's nut zerts already in there. So it looks like they're inviting us to create uh, skids and stuff for that. It definitely needs more skids down below, um, but it is pretty high clearance. The fuel tank is definitely not high clearance. We may add an additional to that. That's why we're talking about doing some auxiliary fuel tanks uh, to help with the range and some other stuff. But the last thing I'm gonna end with is the frame on this thing. Galena wagons, G-Wagons have some of the beefiest frames out there, period. I don't know if anybody wants to argue or not, but it's just a fact. This thing dominates it. It's not only, is, it is literally about this big round, and it's a heavy gauge. They powder coat it. They did kind of a, a rough finish powder coat, which I don't like, because I know it's gonna show more of the dirt and stuff more, but you could order the frame black, light gray or red, which is really pretty cool. And then they make sure that they do all sorts of rust proofing in that because the Land Rovers were notorious on rusting out. No way this is gonna be. And then another thing we'll show you on the, the meat run, the meat video we're gonna do, the mounting for doing uh, rock sliders on this is truly legit. I've got frame mounts sticking out that I could bolt things onto and bring it up high and tight and not worry about crunching the body because it's literally going straight to the frame. There's gonna be a lot more. I'll go into a much deeper dive. I'm gonna have a little bit more time to play with this thing. Right now, we gotta laser scan this. So I was warned by my partner, do not take it wheeling hard yet so I don't bend something, which I don't think would happen anyway, but you never know. So uh, on the next time, the gravy train will flow and you're gonna be hungry. It's gonna be good. You'll be satisfied. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.